All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for making it here into our very first um, Twitch live broadcast displaying Pike and Shot, our upcoming strategy game designed by Richard Butley Scott and developed by Byzantine Games and the Lord's Game Studio. Uh, Pike and Shot is a game set during the Thirty Years' War, the Italian Wars and the English Civil War. And it is a turn-based game that lets you take part in the battles of these wars um, and try to, to compare your skills with those of the, the historical generals fighting the historical battles themselves through the campaign modes, um, as we can see here, or, or fighting in one of the like unlimited amount of skirmishes which you can set up and personalize completely yourself, as well as uh, an editor which allows you to really design your own missions with the exact same tools that our mission designers had. And these can even be shared online. Of course there's also a multiplayer uh, which uses Slytherin's revolutionary play-by-email system um, which allows you to very easily and extremely conveniently uh, play multiplayer games. It's, it's really good fun. Uh, we've already had a lot of fun here at, uh, at the office with it, uh, playing games internally. So it's definitely one to recommend. Uh, tonight I will be showing you a brief overview of the game, uh, playing a short skirmish that um, was made with the skirmish generator, setting, me setting the parameters and, and then just jumping in. Uh, it's going to be a medium game, medium sized game, medium sized armies, medium sized map and an open field battle. So let's just jump in. Right, here we are in our random battle map. Uh, we're a couple of turns in, the opening moves have been decided. And we are playing the Protestant Germans um, on this area, fighting uh, Sp Spanish troops to our uh, front. This is an open field battle, which means that you can either have in skirmishes like attack battles, defensive battles, uh, battles where you wait for reinforcements, battles where a flanking force will show up at some point. This is an open field battle, which is the most symmetrical one uh, you can get. And so the armies are about equal size, the army positioning is about equal. As you can see, I have some height advantage with my hills, but the enemy has uh, sufficient cover from trees. And it's a, it's a great way to really... Um, try everything uh, or to, to, to test your skills against other players as well as the AI and I must say that for a game the AI is, is very very uh, proper and, and extremely challenging and many of our testers actually reported that this is um, this is one of the most challenging AIs they've ever faced in a game so I've just done my opening moves um, and I'm gonna press the end turn button here and let the enemy uh, see if the enemy will come to us. As you can see I've positioned my cavalry on my flank to the left which is a combination of heavier cavalry and ranged cavalry and um, I have other skirmishing formations to my right which are already engaging some of the enemy skirmishers and lighter cannons and uh, to my front I have an infantry line supported by heavy and medium cannons. So the goal of this game is um, to route your opponent. And um, routing is more important than killing them. You want to gain control of the battlefield, not slaughter the opposing armies. If you go for this strategy, well, you will lose a lot more men yourself than is actually needed. So you want to target those troops that you can think can route and make sure you get some sort of like avalanche of, of routing units going, which is the ideal. So here we can see some firefights going on with an enemy unit getting disrupted by fire, which means that it's lost a, a cohesion level. Uh, disrupted units fight with less efficiency and um, are also easier to, to lose altogether. And now they go to fragmented, which is the seven, second cohesion loss and is indicated by the F we can see on the flag. Right, so the residual shooting phase every... Uh, unit that has not fired during the turn of the, um, and still can fire will do so. So that's what we're looking at here. In the melee phase of course all the melees will be fought out and decided. Um, which we, we are not into yet but those will sure be coming. Right so it's my turn again. I have control over all my units and um, we're gonna see what would be the best way to go. I have my cavalry here, uh, which is 
quite a strong force and I'd like to get them to engage the enemy at some point, although I'm somewhat hesitant because I'm not sure what is in these bushes. On the other side we're almost routing this enemy unit. Um, these are our units, so let's just focus on that one for now. So I'm going to just click my unit. The interface is, is incredibly easy to use and very intuitive and you, you understand it like in the first couple of minutes you, you launch the game. It feels very natural. You click the enemy unit and we're going to go for a ranged attack. We can see some of the stats and uh, modifiers that are in place here and the projected amount of casualties. So we're going to move up this unit as well to get the extra firepower going. And unfortunately we couldn't force him to a route, but again he's still fragmented so there's a good chance that we'll come next turn. In the meantime I'm going to move up my infantry formations. And these formations are consisted, um, like, uh, true to the period, of both pike units and uh, shot units. Uh, so they have pikes and they have muskets. Uh, in this case, this unit has 60% muskets, 40% pikes, which means they are capable of both ranged attacks as well as melee combat, and are uh, very deadly to cavalry formations, of course. With my cannons, I'd like to focus on the enemy cavalry, on their heavy cavalry. We're going to hope to to at least disrupt one of the units before we move in, which unfortunately is not the case now, but hopefully will happen soon. So here I'm going to use my lighter cavalry to to well medium cavalry it is actually to get into the the bushes and cover the, that side while my heavier cavalry cavalry will try and move in. they're moving in here and um, at the meantime I'm going to continue to put pressure with my own infantry formations. These units are moving through rough ground which is not ideal and it's a bit foolish of me actually to send them there in the first place so I'd like to get them out as soon as possible as it doesn't allow the heavier infantry to fight in optimal uh, situation. So I'm going to turn towards the enemy, I'm wheeling towards the enemy as you can see, the game is grid based, but um, every unit has eight uh, different direction options. And I'm going to go for a fire. I'm also going to move up this and focus on the enemy. And here we're going to continue to harass the enemy cannons. Okay, so now we've moved all our units uh, for this turn. We've done some damage, but actually not as much as I'd hoped. We didn't manage to route this guy. Uh, well, we're going to see what happens next turn anyway, and see what the enemy has in store for us. Right, so the enemy doesn't appear to be too keen on moving out yet, preferring me to come to their side, uh, and hoping to, to hit me in the flanks. Ah, look. And there it suddenly appears from the from the woods. Well meanwhile the heavy cavalry are moving toward the flank of my arquebusiers. So I gotta get them out of there. The Hazars are retreating. No, this is not the same as routing. Retreating they maintain uh they will remain on the field until they are rallied. Uh, are there settings for unit movement speeds? Uh, yes, there are definitely settings for unit movement speeds. It's currently set at 80%, uh, but you, you can uh, tweak that if, if you like. Okay. So we're back in control. I'm very threatened by the enemy suddenly appearing on two sides 
uh, of my cavalry and ideally I'd like to get out there even though I feel like it's not going to be possible at the moment. Um, so instead I'm going to move in some reinforcements and let, let this thing escalate here. I'm going to try and keep this heavy cavalry unit busy so he won't be able to, or at least less able to flank uh, my cavalry unit while I engage uh, the enemy cannons. So I'm charging them, they're going into a melee now. And when a melee happens the units get locked, so as long as the melee continues neither of us won't be able to control the unit in question. Meanwhile I'm going to continue to chase uh, for the Hussars attacking them from the rear and flanking them immediately and they are routing but as you can see my own unit is charging the enemy and um, is routing the field as well so there is a chance it will return later on but for now it's it's definitely an annoyance I'm gonna move my skirmishers again to the flank of the enemy and engaging them with fire And I'm gonna move out here as well. Engaging the enemy, so probably uh, an infantry melee will ensue here at some point. trying to move these to the flank of the enemy to at least uh, harass them, annoy them or, or otherwise uh, threaten them or disrupt their formations uh, while I move up further with my infantry. I'm going to scare away these uh, musketeers. Uh, lighter units are set to evade from attacks from stronger units and uh, therefore uh, they will try and, and avoid battle if they know they're going to lose. So this is something to, to always take into account. So that's what you saw here. So he's not routing or anything, he's just maintaining a secure distance. Now here we have some target practice for our cannons, hopefully we can deal a good amount of damage. Uh, yeah, there is uh, like no ammo management indeed taken into account. It's to avoid micromanagement. It's to keep keep the flow of the game going uh, while you play, and uh, at the same time, it would be extremely tedious to 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 have this uh, simulated and have resupply stuff uh, in the game, etc. And here we are in still engaging the cannons, unfortunately only doing minor damage while the enemy infantry is moving up. They are also better units, so someone, something you definitely be, should be scared of. And we have the enemy turning towards me here, charging me actually uh, with a, with a draw. Um, if you're wondering like how do these uh, combat uh, results uh, appear, you can in the options set uh, detailed combat reports uh, if you like. This will give you like a much more detailed overview of what exactly happened. Um, for me however, I prefer to, to, to know the results I'm, uh, and, and see. I keep, keep the game more going, basically. But if you want, I mean all the numbers are there, and you can look at them. Uh, the same goes for the unit statistics, which I'll show you in a second, uh, once we get to our turn again. So now we're going to the melee phase again. Let's see how we're faring against the enemies. We disrupted the cannon formation, but we're also engaged with the enemy cursors.
Right, so now we're in control again. What I mentioned about the uh, uh, unit statistics, if we click on that, here we have three statistics. So a close combat rating, a shooting attack rating, and an armor rating. Um, these are the basic uh, unit statistics we need. We also have like the musket 60%, pike 40%. If we control click on the unit, we bring up a much more detailed overview of the unit with special abilities, uh, with, with a small uh, uh, string of, of what the unit is. So this one, for example, is immune to ill effect from flank attacks. No, this does not include rear attacks. Um, it also is a large artillery target, meaning it's easier to hit and will suffer more damage. So, so it, for those who are looking for the more uh, statistical approach to this, um, the details are definitely there. And um, So it's up to you how, how much you want to spend on these and how much you want to analyze these. So here we're trying to uh, route this enemy unit of heavy cavalry. Uh, unfortunately not succeeding this very turn. And no, it's a shame. At the same time I'm somewhat frightened for this veteran uh, Turcho unit. So we're going to focus our artillery again at the, at the very same unit we did before. Um, trying to wear it down. Unfortunately it refuses to, to go disrupted even though it's suffered some significant casualties. Meanwhile we're gonna assist this unit which is in melee. And we finally managed to disrupt it which means that even when it goes into melee it will have significantly reduced combat effectiveness. So this is very good news for us. Um, here I'm